как одинокий волк поет по твоим окном Хочу тебя кричать о том, как сильно я влюблен в тебя я ее. It was blown way out of proportion, and I'm fucking sick of making you a big deal out of bullshit. All of you. It's fucking stupid. Stupid as hell. Shit, this reality is just crap. In the morning, we went to Solohor Park. <laughs> okay, all right, I'm sorry, Solohor. <laughs> hey, Uncle Zavin. What? What's it like to drive around bloggers? They're all bloggers, by the way, not school kids. They're decent. I like that. But that's not for certain. Huh? But that's not for certain. What's not for certain? I'm saying it's not for certain. And what's not for certain? You're not? We're decent. We are. We're decent. We are. We need to test that. He's just joking. Guys, I look at you and I'm already happy. It's nice. Right back at you. Hey, yo, guys, we're looking at headed to the town Solo Hall. The city of Sochi was founded in 2011. So, a joke, a joke. Stop, stop, stop. So, a man once ate a lot of yeast and sugar and rose to the occasion. <laughs> To be honest, I just sat the whole way there, all four hours it seemed, texting Nikita. I was crying the whole way. I just sat there, didn't talk to anyone. Everything got on my nerves, like Masha Riri's laughter, just Natsia sitting next to me made me angry. Absolutely everything got on my nerves. I was in a very bad mood and Nikita kept texting me. We were trying to figure everything out. I wrote out millions, thousands of excuses it seemed, even though they were just facts. But because he didn't understand what went down in Kazan, for him, it was just a fucking shock. I've been cheated on. I tried to explain it all to him and the conversation just wasn't working. And at some point, I just felt so empty. I realized that I didn't feel anything, not pain, not happiness. I was just sitting there like a vegetable existing. I want everything in this reality to be as honest as possible. It's impossible because there's already fakery. I, well, uh... Who's fake? You know very well yourself. Well, we could come to an agreement with you guys. If we're putting on a real show, then we're showing it for real. If somebody at least asks to remove something, then I'll consider other options too. I just don't understand why I come up to, for example, you and say, cut this out. Like everyone came here knowing that we're filming a reality show, that 24 seven there are cameras, all this. So when I was arguing with Nikita, he also told me afterwards, why the fuck? I was just sitting here and we're being film are you serious that's all i can tell you fucking great they're filming my reaction that's Fuck. it it's reality i'm being filmed 24 7. i don't know how you couldn't have known this chana why did you do this to me why the fuck? I don't want to be in your EXO community and in the reality, to which I told him it was inevitable. That's it. That's superb. Well done. And when they came up to you and tell you something, you decide yourself, what's the difference? Who do you feel is being fake? I can't say. We were in the bus and the roads there had all kinds of cliffs. It was very dangerous and we were told, so guys, further up, it's going to be very dangerous to drive through, so cool, we're going to cool, walk the next cool. kilometer. Okay, great. Walking. I'd rather walk there than flip over in the bus. I've seen millions of videos where buses either get stuck or fly off somewhere and that was not cool. 
Boom! Go straight back to the hotel. Tanya, sit down. I don't care. I'm just going because Boom's alone. I'm fucking scared. Shut up. Well, you either die today or tomorrow, maybe. And our little Tanya Boom that's always like, I'll get him. I'm so strong and not afraid of anything or anyone. Hey, got scared of a cliff. Scared that we might fall off. All together, at least. We'll open the window when it's dangerous, just in case. Everyone knows I've got a fear of heights. And there it was, fucking high up. If our bus would've fucking started rolling down, we would just, I don't even know what to compare it to. You know, like spitballs from a pen? When you spit out the balls of paper, we'd be the same, just flying out of the bus. Continue by car further up the hill. Attention. Of course we aren't going to walk, we were too lazy, so we're like, no, we'll stay on the bus. If you think the drive was peaceful, then... Just watch. Bimby, you're dragging everyone behind now. Come on. Guys, guys, don't walk around. The bus is shaking. Please, the bus is shaking. Guys, don't walk around. The bus is shaking. Guys, don't walk around. Please, the bus is shaking. And so we got to Solo Hall, and I didn't want to wait. I was really scared, you know, when the adrenaline's pumping like that. When the adrenaline's taking over, I just wanted... The window was there. I, like, jumped out, tried it out, just for the drive back. I wanted to know how to jump out of there. Should we take our things? The backpack? I don't know what you're changing into. Today was absolutely horrible. I felt really bad. I'm just used to being together with Danya 24-7, talking, joking, flirting with each other. Yes, that's normal for our relationship. And today, he just ignored me. Stop, you're gonna get <laughs> snot everywhere. I can't forgive right away. Because what she did was very... I don't know. For me, it seemed very cruel. But not because it was recorded, but because of the way she later presented it. Like, she didn't give a fuck. Why should I give a fuck, then? Don't forget to watch the other videos and playlists on our channel. There are many different and interesting videos fit for every taste waiting just for you. And now, let's continue watching. I actually think I'm like cursed. Somebody cursed me. Cursed? I honestly feel that. No, no, I'm not joking. Look, every time I have to- And you believe that. Record a song, which I don't do often. The day before recording, I get sick. For example, my throat hurts. Or even last time we filmed reality, I threw up 15 times an hour at the end of the reality. How oh, sweet, Gary. So one time I went to a sorcerer near Tula. Who were you with? They're laughing at me. I'm telling you a real story. And what is it now? They're laughing at me. You don't give a damn about me. It's like I'm not here. <laughs> Gary. So guys, a story. Story time. I don't know if you'll believe it or not. Every time I have something important to do, I get sick. Always. Like, when I need to record a song, my throat starts hurting. We need to film reality? We're filming the second season of reality, and I got sick. And it's always like that, all my life. But when I was a kid, I visited a sorcerer near Tula. I'm not joking. Like an old lady? No, like the son of an old lady. There was a mother and son. Old the man. son was around 30, and then she was around 50. So we sat down, and my father, he always had pains in his kidney, his back. What's there at the back? Kidneys, I think. Kidneys, yeah, kidneys. He said, my kidneys started hurting. I was in the car for an hour going from Moscow to Tula and it started hurting. He looked at him, sat down in the chair and started to raise his kidney like this. And, and dad said he felt his kidney rise. He, he went there once, he said, once. And it started hurting only when he got closer to Moscow. Afterwards, after the second time, his kidney started hurting only after the halfway point. He went to the third time, he raised his kidney, and it stopped. His kidney didn't hurt again. That's like the fucking shit, right? Sorcerers. That's wild. Raising kidneys with your hands is just... I think only Vology XXL could do that. And only in these interviews. He could say, So hi everyone, my name is Vology XXL, and now I'm raising the camera. One more thing, when dad came to him the first time, the sorcerer looked at him and said, well, your kidney and your nose was broken too. How did he know that his nose was broken? You can tell. Okay, the nose maybe, but the kidney? Skin color. Okay, but how did he raise it? Then why did it not hurt after three times? After several years? A coincidence. Because he convinced him. 
Okay. So he's sitting there and tells him, well, your kidney is lowered and you're cursed. Cursed? Yeah, my dad's sitting there like, what do you mean cursed? Well, a curse. I'll lift it now. He just looks at him like, I'm sitting here. Here's the sorcerer. Here's dad. He's looking at him. Dad starts feeling sick. He goes outside and throws up. And the sorcerer says the curse is lifted. No, really, let's go. Yeah, me too. A coincidence. When I was a kid, a fortune teller said I'd start talking to my dad at 15, and it happened. I honestly believe all illnesses stem from the mind. That's a fact, but I don't believe you can lift a kidney with your hands. I don't believe in sorcerers, but I believe in a belief. I think everyone believes in something. It doesn't matter what, in the universe, even though I believe in the universe, in God, in themselves, because living without faith in yourself is very difficult. But I haven't had to believe in sorcerers yet, unfortunately, or fortunately. So dad, dad, we're filming reality. Hello? Question, here's the question. We're talking about the sorcerer. How did he raise your kidney? Wait a second. He'll show it. He'll show it like this. Like this. Show us. It's 50 cent. If he really raised his dad's kidney, then... Did he make contact with his hand? The body? Why was it lowered, by the way? No, he didn't. How did it feel? Did you treat it in any way? No. No, I don't believe in sorcerers or shamans either. I would like to, but I don't. I think it's too impossible to explain. But would you like to speak to a shaman if you had the chance? I don't want to speak to shamans. I don't want to speak to fortune tellers. I try to avoid all of this. All of them are wrong people to me. When I see them, honestly, I run 10 meters away. I'm scared of them, to be honest. For me, it's something very scary. I don't want shamans or fortune tellers to impose on me that I'll have 10 kids, a husband with the name O, a husband with the name starting with S. Like, what the hell? But it's sets very deep here. I have a friend, my best friend, a fortune teller told her that her first boyfriend's name would start with a P. For two years, she looked for a boyfriend whose name would start with P. Everyone who chatted her up, if they were called Sasha or Maxim, that's it. We don't talk because the fortune teller said my boyfriend's name will start with P. By the way, Mark, I think you need to see him. I'll help you get rid of illness, depression, afflictions, and all kinds of curses. Yes, I need that. Mark, can you imagine Elsa's dad doesn't know she's in Sochi? What? Gang or bang? Hold on. Fuck. Mom's texting me. Dad is asking why you were in Sochi. Wild. My dad was sent the photo. What? What? Say it's photoshopped. Dad is asking why I was in Sochi. Say it's photoshopped. What? What were you doing in Sochi? Somebody must have sent dad my photo. Say you were filming for YouTube. What photo? By the way, her dad doesn't know she's in Sochi or he wouldn't have let her go. It was the same when we went in the winter. So you get the idea. In winter, after New Year's, when the guys and us flew to Sochi, her dad called her and we were like, oh, and we're in Sochi. And he asked Elsa, where are you? And she was like, at the supermarket. And we were standing at the train station. Got it? I'm in the supermarket. She left and talked to him for half an hour. So we hide it thoroughly every time. Honestly, I would get fucking tired of that. Say it's Moscow River. It's such a restriction to not let you go to Sochi, see the world. What are you writing? I'm writing that we came to advertise Sochi Park. As it is. Fucking hell. Holy shit. Well, it's really awful. How can he... Is he going to come here? And he'll see the tattoo. Fuck. Elsa, run, we'll save you. Why didn't he text you himself? Because maybe he doesn't want to talk to me right now at all. What? That's rough. Are you not ashamed for fucking lying to your dad? I don't have any other choice. As, uh, so your dad has no clue? Dad only found out the day before yesterday. Mom texted me. Dad's asking why you're in Sochi. And what? What's the difference if you're in Moscow or Sochi? Like... She had to ask. Well, I had to ask for permission beforehand. Say how, why, what I'll be doing there, where I'll be every day. Till what age is that usually? Till you die. Till you die? 
No, till you get married. Yeah, when you get married, it's different. Well, Elsa, look, we have Mark. You can quickly get married. Yes, Dad will approve. One time I was going through my things, and there was a letter, a letter from my past. There was a terrible moment, a terrible time, when every day my parents scolded me. At one point... I had an emotional outburst. I took a pen and paper and started writing down all my feelings. And there I said that. I could read it. Maybe. Go on. Read it. It's just Dima has it, Eva. Dima isn't here yet. He has it. I kind of only just realized where I'm going to be. Wednesday, September 21st. Thank you to my parents for not letting my eyes dry because day after day they fill with tears. Also, thank you for making me feel special. I often think, why me? Why to me? I sincerely hope it will get better because it can't get any worse. Or could it? It's kind of scary. How safe is that? Extremely. You sure, yeah? I'm very scared of losing myself, losing and killing my personality. Today, my dad shouted at me because I'm registered on social media under my real name, even though there aren't any photos. He's already pressuring me to forget who I am, but he's forgetting I'm just 17 years old, that I'm a kid. Why am I being separated from society? I have to be a puppet in their hands and do what they order me to do. Sometimes I think I live 17 years for nothing, a daily ritual. Home, school, walking with my brother, now university. All this time, I haven't had a single significant or happy event. It amazes me that this world is so huge and there are so many possibilities. I want to be a part of this world. They say a person's life depends solely on them, but not in my case. I have had the most important things stripped away from me. Freedom. I'm broken. I feel like a butterfly that has had its wings torn off. Sad, right? Yes, but now everything's good. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on, hold on. Please hold on. Please. One, two, three. I would like to wish every person to continue dreaming and always remember his dreams and repeat them every day. I believe that everyone has to have their freedom. Absolutely everyone has that right in their life. Elsa, you don't fully understand what it means. What? What's gang bang? You don't need to understand it. You need to feel it. Gang bang? <laughs> no, it's not that. Yeah, Elsa, almost. The movement is spot on. You have five minutes to Google it. What? What is it? What? What? What is it? I don't. What is it, girls? Okay. <laughs> you didn't know Fuck. what gangbang was? Thank God, I'm not getting that. Did you know? Gang bang. And you signed me up for it? Okay, I'm joking. But it's a different context. Yeah, I just thought like gang bang bang boom. That's our context. They didn't know. If I got that tattoo, I'd... My dad would maybe so... He'd be surprised, but he wouldn't do anything about it. He is totally against it, of course, because he believes your body is God's shrine. So anyways, it's okay. He's already used to it. He's used to the fact I do that and that's it. When everyone saw that Elsa got the gang bang hold on tattoo, they were shocked. Fucking hell! What? What? It's my first tattoo in this one. Bang? Bang. Gang, Gang and, and bang, bang. And hold, hold on. on. 
So Elsa got gang, I got bang, and Dasha got hold on. We'll post a TikTok no, no. tomorrow. Elsa? Elsa. Eliza? Elsa. 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 What the fuck? She didn't even think about. No, I. Fuck. It's. No, no. She didn't even know what gang and bang was. Wait, wait. Just gang bang is fucking. Yeah, yeah. She got gang bang? She got gang. Gang. Like, we should have zoned. Wait, do her parents know? No. She didn't tell her dad. Her her dad will be like, so she'll come, she'll come in real life, say, hello, dad. He'll be like, the fuck, gang? Like, what? I don't think they'll see it. Like, ever? You seem to have a tradition dedicating songs to guys that turn you down. Yeah. Do you like him? Well, like, maybe. I know who you like. You liked another guy. Soda Love? No, no, he's dark-skinned. Dark huh? skin even kind of rhymes with his name. Skin. He's not black. He's not dark skin. Tim? Yeah. So, guys, I'm turning over the page from the Tim and Alicia chapter. Maybe you think we could have been a stunning couple, but no, that's how it is. It's weird that I don't have a boyfriend, but on the other hand, I think I'm actually happy about it because I'm constantly fucking telling everyone to go to hell. <laughs> but on one hand, I think it's good because I don't want to be associated with someone. I just want to be Alicia. Alicia, like, without anyone, not someone's girlfriend, not in love with someone. I want to be Alicia. And so it's actually weird that I don't have a boyfriend. Question, just in case. Sorry, Sveta, but you're, like, sexy. And your Instagram shows us that. But you say boys turn you down. How so? What's the problem? It, it seems... I don't know. It seems like knowing you in real life, it seems that on Insta, you're all like, fuck yeah, piss off. But in real life, you keep to yourself and not that confident. Do you think you have some sort of disassociative disorder? Fuck, I don't know how to explain it. Don't you think it's weird? Why don't you tell people IRL Shit. to fuck off? Maybe that's why you don't get guys. I tell people to fuck off IRL who actually should fuck off. I don't know. I don't know. I think I'm sick because I don't know. When guys message me, I turn them down. And when I turn them down and they don't message me, I get annoyed. And when I like someone, they don't like me. And when someone likes me, I don't like them. Why? Should I tell everyone to fuck off? Okay, if they've gotten on my nerves, yeah, I can tell them to fuck off. But if it's nothing, I wouldn't because I'm kind. On Instagram, it's just a persona. So it's a fake thing. No, I am like that, but I'm kind. Well, what are you like? Well, I post these photos on Instagram not to sleep with anyone or for guys to message me, but because I like these kinds of photos. I think it's cool, and when I post them, I love myself. When I was in fifth grade, my lovely classmates, well, no, we were on good terms. I always made friends with the boys, but some dumbasses could say, Flatas! Flatso! Flatso! And maybe I take these photos because before I was made fun of, and now I'm not flat. In fifth grade, you told me I was flat, but now... Have you had sex? No. No? You're just a baby. I think if you wanted to, you could chat somebody up in a club and just like that. Well, obviously. Why not then? Well, I think I should find a good guy. That would be good enough for me. Yeah, that's exactly your persona, by the yes. way. Yes. I don't need it to be a one-time thing. Wait, I've solved your problem! You'll never find that one prince that you want because your persona is a one-night stand ho. Sorry. I mean, you think that yourself, you said. It's just the photos. You think people see anything but photos people on the internet? People think that. Really? When we sat down to talk with Andrew Ray, he said I was sick. And it's a problem. And 
<laughs> because of my Instagram post. I'll be alone till the day I die. <laughs> okay. Eliza, our reality director, thinks that talking about family makes us closer. Maybe it's true. As therapists say, it all stems from childhood situations, and finding out what situations a person was in, you find out why they're this way now. Hello, everyone. My name is Irina. I'm a practicing therapist and a psychoanalyst. Because some of the bloggers refused to comment on their relationship with their parents, we invited a therapist to understand why. What is everyone's relationship like with their parents? Superb. Okay. I don't really keep in touch with my parents. Let's start here. Dasha. I don't really keep in touch with my parents. You don't talk to your mom? No. And your dad? Well, I text him sometimes, but not like with mom, kind of not like disregard with dad. Text him sometimes, well, like an imitation of closeness, an imitation of his presence in our life. I don't know, I see my dad because I also have a sister and I like spend time with my sister. Can I ask, did, did I miss when Dasha said why she doesn't talk to her mom? Are you all interested? Yes. I'm sure it's going to be like a 10 out of 10. Well, I know, but I'm interested. Here I see such a happiness in the question that you're interested in talking about this because it's actually important to her to talk about it. Because when she talks about it, she heals, she processes this pain. Usually the stories that people don't want to tell are the most interesting, so... Okay, so I didn't speak to my dad because when I was born, he abandoned me. I started talking to him when I was 15, and mom, because they divorced, she blamed me for it her whole life, even though they divorced when I was three days old. Three days, and I was to fucking blame. A baby was born that had done absolutely nothing wrong to the dad. Most likely he didn't abandon the child, he abandoned the connection with the mom. Well, yeah, she blamed me and said that if I wasn't born, everything would be okay, and she beat the shit out of me. What? What she said about her mother beating the shit out of her for a year, it's because mom had very high expectations. So, mom lived with the idea that this child could bring them together to help keep her man, and that didn't happen. No, she beat the shit out of me all my life till I was around 10, then I moved to America. When I threw tantrums, she dragged me by my hair to the bathroom and drowned me so that I would calm down. She's laughing while telling this. She always laughs. It's hysterical laughter. That's fucking cool. Why dwell on it? No, I don't care. That anger, that's hurt inside her. What will it lead to? I feel that inside she's very cold. Maybe she can't build serious, deep, and most importantly, trusting relationship. There are men in her life, of course, but they're all kept at a distance. But there's no complete trust, and that is, first and foremost, a fear of being rejected. Because mom already did that. Aunt mother is the person with whom the child feels safe. So it's the most dear, well, if we're talking about unconditional love, that's mom. And if mom did that, who can you even trust? Like, at that time, it wasn't great, but now? Well, guys, one time my great uncle stayed over and hit me with a belt. My mom threw such a fit that You're he hit me. You're spoiled child. One time? One time with a belt? So spoiled. How can you even touch little Gary? He's a genius. He's just perfect. Mary knows. He's a prince. How can you even touch him? Unfortunately, I don't know Gary's story, but what gets me is the reaction of everyone else. This jeering, the urge to ruffle his feathers, like, all right, you got everything you wanted, it was easy. Any request was met. And what about you, Chana? What? With your parents. Top notch. Chana's like a closed book. No, it's yeah, I don't honestly know. all really I don't know good. either. Like they're also really, really strict. Strict parents aren't bad. It might sound horrible. It forms, you know, a sense of carcass. But I was always a very good kid, always, and I was okay That's with it That's why all. you sold vodka in Vietnam? What? Wait, is that true? Yeah, Chana was expelled from school because of it. It led to, well, I see Chana as a very strong figure, more complete, because in her childhood, she soaked in that support. 
her parents love. And it helps her now because she doesn't have mood swings going from one to another. She's cold-headed, calm, reasonable, and thinks about where she's going next. So I was dating my boyfriend and I came home too late. I didn't text my mom, she was calling me nonstop. We had an argument and I came home. Everything's okay. I was late by only like 30 minutes. She started screaming at me and it so happened that I told her also something like, I hate you, and she slapped me across the face really hard. It hurt. It was all red. Then my sister came in and slapped me across the other cheek. My family just beat the shit out of me, and I was sitting, oh, standing in the bathroom like, my sister and mom are staring, shouting at me, and I was like, are you out of your fucking minds? This reaction in the form of a slap is hurt. A lot of hurt, as in, you don't give a shit about me. I actually really love you and very worried about you. And when I'm told I hate you at that moment, it's like a cherry on top that set it off. What do you think? Does it actually influence you somehow if your parents hit you? Yeah, of course it does. So was everyone here hit? No. No, no. Put your hands up. Only a Not few times. regularly. Wait, we need to understand the difference between beatings and arguments. As a punishment. Like, you know, some kids get beaten really hard. Yes, like Dasha. Well, like, Dasha, I think no one else did. Yeah, I got my lips smacked when I said bad words. That doesn't count. That's normal. I'd love to ask why the hell it doesn't count when lips get smacked. Where's the body map that says, yeah, you can't spank someone that's bad, but lips are okay. No, all in all, let's say that when a parent can't hold back, that's crap. You know, I was always very surprised when my classmates weren't allowed to play on the computer. Like, I played the Sega till it turned off because it overheated, and then... And then your mom would come up and say, your Sega turned off, we need to turn on the Sega! I can come to the conclusion that he serves as a trigger to the guys. No, no, I would take it to the freezer, it cooled down for 15 minutes, and then we continue playing. Gary, you were so spoiled. He is so spoiled. Honestly, I'm telling you. And that made an impact on Gary. You know, when Gary was a kid, he was like, I want this. Buy it. <laughs> That's the way it should be in your childhood. That's how a kid should live. Feeling like you're loved, cared for, spoiled. Presents are normal, too. A kid should understand they got presents not because it's a holiday or their birthday. Parents can get a gift just because they love me. Who's fake? You know very well yourself. When Shauna says the word fake, from the first day, I've said to my colleague Eliza that the main person who's fake here is Mary Sen.